Hey everyone, good morning and hope everyone's having a great uh, Friday before Christmas. Uh, this is Omar Kanda with CIT and uh, we're going to uh, go over TaxWise desktop um, for 2017. Uh, just a few things here. Um, if you have any questions, please type them into the question dialog box and you go to webinar uh, control panel. Also, I will be taking uh, random, uh, after every section, I will pause for to answer some questions here. I'll be doing this webinar alone, so uh, please be patient a little bit if you um, ask a question. And uh, we'll get started. Um, if you can't hear me or have any technical difficulties, please let me know right now on the uh, GoToWebinar, either chat or question. All right, so we've been doing a lot of, uh, those of you who have attended other webinars or maybe checked out our YouTube channel, we've been doing a lot of um, TaxWise Online. And, you know, honestly, there's not a huge difference as far as the tax preparation part. The online is just more convenient. It doesn't have the same number of features, but you're sacrificing uh, the features for uh, security and convenience. Now, um, those of you who are new to desktop who switch back for either the pre-act or because if you have just spotty internet connection or um, are using it for your 1120s, 1065 or whatever, it's the same process. So, um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna go over and how to get it set up and you know what what you need to know is just to get going with TaxWise desktop. So the first thing I want to point out is to make sure everyone knows to go to our support site myjoincit.com slash support. That is where you want to go to grab everything CIT related. Um, and then uh, you can see here we have the phone numbers for uh, software support, bank support, and CIT. You want to make sure that you you have these bookmarks so that way if you have any questions about the software or about um, you know about how to do something you know who to call we'll we'll help you get set up installed and trained but once you're up and going you want to definitely call tax to have an excellent group of support reps over there so if you haven't already downloaded and installed desktop it's real easy if you go to our support site it has a desktop download link and you can go and download 17 16 15 and 14 if you need prior years to that we have another link for you um so uh, you can e-file all these years and that's why we have those listed uh, at that point when we posted them. So what you want to do is just click on this, run the installer real easy, and it'll, uh, once you install it, it will put up an icon that looks like the CIT logo on your desktop. And uh, you know you simply want to open it. If you are networked, uh, it'll say different drives, and you know obviously we'll help you with the network setup on that. Um, this is that's going to be your login screen. Now, if you notice here, there's a tab that has a CIT support. So we also added the CIT support page to your desktop when you open it. So in case you ever want to jump in there, chat with us, or ask us anything, it's in there for you. So um, the one thing you want to do is the the unique thing about if those of you who are used online or uh, versus desktop, the one thing about desktop is you can't do any return preparation under admin. But you have to use the admin to create your users and set up your tax form defaults, quote unquote, return templates in the online. So the first time you log in, you're gonna have a blank password and that's usually normal and then you'll set it up. For me, I already set up my password. Um, so I just need to log in. And then it'll pop up with select your package and I'm gonna select the 1040 individual. So now I'm logged in under admin. I still have the same uh, view, but I can't as I can't start new returns. I can't really do anything except set up my software. And so I'm going to go over like the initial setup process. Now, when you install the software, it's going to present you with this setup assistant. But um, since it's already installed, I'm going to just show it to you. This is what happens after you install. You're going to have to go through all these steps and make sure you put in your EFIN and reg code. That once you validate that, you can continue on with the with the tax wise. Uh, if you don't have those, you need to get them from us. We'll, you know, and we'll get you going. You put your office information, groups, and users. That's the big one. Is that you have users and you have preparers. So you want to make sure that um, the the user is going to be the person who logs in to the software. And you can set if you want them to be a manager, interviewer, or preparer. There's different groups and different security settings. 
that I, I set up as including the password. So you can go in there, uh, you can add a username, you can also edit uh, their password for them. So if they forgot their password, you can do all that under admin. So, you know, you just pretty much set up their login. The next one is gonna be the prepare information. Now this is where it gets unique. Um, every preparer, you have to load every preparer inside the prepare information and assign them a preparer ID. So for me, for example, let me edit my information here. A prepare ID just needs to be a number. So just give give any prepare, maybe one, two, three, four, whatever you wanna set it. I set mine at 27, just as a random number. Um, put my name, my EFIN number, PTIN, all that, you know, mark that I'm an ERO and I'm an active and print signature even, and I can put my name here. So you'll have all this information, obviously. You're, um, I'm just missing the phone number. You'll see in red that it's required, and that will set me up as a preparer. Now, as you can see, I'm the only preparer in this firm, so I just, I'm just i gonna make myself my default. If you have more than one, you still have to select a default one. So whoever does the most returns, whoever's office manager, whatever you wanna do, you set them up as, a, as the preparer. And you can have as many preparers as you want and as many users as you want. So um, that's where it gets a little bit different than TaxWise online. Um, this part is you just set up your printer, uh, just whatever's, you know, it's very straightforward, general options and last year carry forward. So I'm gonna close out of this. And so the way you get to here, in case you already installed the software, is you go to tools. Everything's gonna be within tools, utility setup assistance. Like a lot, of inform a lot of the utilities will be in here. And you go to setup and setup assistance. So make sure that you're familiar on how to access that and how to, um, you know, set up your, your users and, and edit. So now once I have the software installed and I have my users, you know, my preparers loaded in, I don't have to have all of them as long as I have some of them in there, at least one preparer, because um, you have to have at least one preparer since you can't pre prepare on your admin. The next step would be is to set up, uh, just like in online where we have the templates, we want to set up what's called tax form defaults. So if I go to tools and I go to edit tax form defaults, it will bring you with this screen, just like you would start a new return, but it's uh, yellow background, just to let you know that you are in tax form defaults. And you can do it for any of the packages. So what tax form defaults is, it's just a, it's just a blank return. You load the forms that you want on, it's like a template. So every return that you start will have these defaulted fields already checked or filled out or uh, added on. So that way, you know, um, you don't have to key in the same information all the time. So for me, for example, I'm using the tax form defaults on the main info. I'm excluding Puerto Rico income. Since I don't do any Puerto Rico returns, I'm clicking no on that because otherwise you would have to answer it every time. I don't do any states in Florida. If you do states, make sure you put your states down so you don't have to keep keying that in every time. If you do e-file only or bank products, you can also pre-select some of this information. Um, I put my pin in here and I put in that it's, um, so uh, self-select uh, practitioner pin and uh, identity proofing. I left that blank here. I don't want to be a third party designee, for example. I'll leave that alone and I'll put in a fake EIN here. So I have my information here, uh, my, my prep preparation information, and then my 8879, I'll put my EFIN in here, uh, my, my company name, so some of this stuff that I want to preload. And uh, I'm gonna keep it simple. I, I have also the price sheet. I only have 15 here for the 1040, but you can also modify the price sheet. So the price sheet is where um, it's automatically, you, you set the fees and then the software will carry forward how many of these forms that you use and you customize it the way you want. And it will carry forward to give you the final invoice. And so I think I put e-file fee here, $15. Um, so that's that's it for my, my defaults, again, this will probably, you know, it, it might change every now and then once you get comfortable with the software and that's fine. You can go back and edit them anytime that you want. And that's uh, that's really the first thing you wanna make sure you do, you need uh, that you do with the tax form default is to make sure you get that set up after you set up your users. That'll get you started on the right uh, track. So other than that, um, I set up my tax form defaults. I created my preparers. 
I'm pretty much ready to start preparing returns. Now, there, as you can see, the desktop is loaded with features, and I encourage you before tax season, go and play around with all of them. You can do signature pads. You can do, um, you know, there's so much stuff. There's like calculators. There's what if scenarios. There's all kinds of 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 nice tools. And what I could recommend for you to do is if you go to video training over here on our support site. Let me see. It popped up. A new pop up for me. Let me show you. Here we go. Uh, TaxWise Online 2000 Education Library. You can see um, all the different um, options. Actually, this is for online. I want to show you the one for desktop. Okay, so I need to update that. I uh, apologize. Um, there's an, there's going to be another one that looks exactly similar to that with desktop, which once this webinar is over, I'll put for both options. It looks like we have it only for online, but it'll have all the options in there, and what and a lot of it cross, you know, it's it's you know they they, they cross connect, you know, as far as uh, what they do because it's so similar. The again the preparation part is exactly the same, so you're not going to have to worry about um, learning how to prepare desktop versus online. And I believe we can go back here and change users. Actually, I'm going to close out. All right, so I'm going to get out of here, get out of admin, and I'm going to get in as a tax preparer. And we'll go ahead and we'll do a practice return. I think the training video is right here, actually. No, nope. we're in that transition time where everything's. Okay. okay. So now I logged in under my username. I'm going to go ahead into the 1040 package. I do have. A uh, practice return here but it's okay I can create a new one and uh, now you can see I still have the support tab but I if I go to tools I don't have any of the admin information so I can't change any of that so for now I'm going to do a practice return and also I want to let you know that I did just add um, practice returns to the software, as you can see right here, I just refreshed it. If you go to software, click on practice returns, we have beginner, intermediate, and advanced, and the answer key. Now keep in mind, these practice returns are for 2016. So your calculation might be a little bit off, or if you wanna double check, I mean, I wouldn't get too carried away with the calculation if it's close enough, because you know they're gonna change your tier, but it gives you good scenarios to work off of until the 17. Is, is live. So I'm going to click on beginner scenario, those of you who want to follow along, and I'm going to go to scenario five. It's the kind of my go-to scenario that I've been doing with the online because it just has a lot of um, good, it's just a good common return to do. So I'm going to go to scenario five right here. This is for uh, Sandra and George Langston. Uh, this is the scenario we're going to enter uh, W-2 data, interest income, report health coverage, Claim EIC, report dependent care expense, and complete the e-file information. Um, they give you some a little bit of background on these, and um, you know, and it, and every one of those scenarios is a little bit different. This is like five, so it's kind of it, it's they start in the each one beginner, intermediate, and advanced all have ten scenarios, and they start easy, and they kind of get uh, more and more difficult as you go along, uh, and you're learning more, and your comfort level goes up. So this is like halfway. Uh, into the beginner return. So let's go ahead and get started preparing this return. So let me go ahead and start a new return and put in their social. I just put in 105 and usually 105 means um, beginner scenario five. And then I just end it with um, with, a, with a series of fives. You can, it tells you to actually put your EFIN number as the remaining digits, but it doesn't matter, it's a practice return. 
So um, tax wise, it's going to be there's going to be a few things you want to, if those of you who are not familiar with the software, if you, you, you key it directly into the forms, you want to get rid of the red. Red are always going to be fields that are required, so you want to make sure you fill it out, and it changes once you type something in and it's a requirement, it will turn something else red on the form. You, you can use tab and you can use your mouse to scroll up and down, and you can also use control E to scroll through the next required field. So, so right now I'm holding control E, it's making, it's not moving because it wants me to put in the first name. So George, if I hit control E, it'll take me to the last name required field and it'll scroll you around. Now, um, if it's in blue and it's a, got a check box to it, that uh, like a check mark, that means that return is being used to, cal it's being used in there, it's a live calculated return. Uh, so you want to, uh, if it's in black like this, like this 65 to one, that means it's not, it's not being used in that return at all. It, there's nothing being calculated. And so if it's in red, that means it's incomplete. So the idea is to make sure everything goes from red to blue. With tax wise online, it's green. So let's go ahead and start keying in. And um, if you have any questions, please uh, type them in the box and I'll pause after every section and go over some of your questions. not retail Wait. all right let's scroll down here um, it wants me to select the filing status married filing joint uh, they have two dependents or twins so accidentally said one month and they're gonna ask for dependent and yeah I see Okay, let's select, um, there will not be a state on this return, let's say e-file only, and uh, the next red field here is gonna be the pin, and they wanted to have a 1005 pin. And we have another pin of 2005. You have to key in today's uh, date, and then verify your identity proofing. Now you can see that I filled in all the requirements right now to get started on this return. It turned uh, blue with a checkbox. That means everything uh, that's required at this point is uh, filled out. Now I need to just go ahead and continue with the return. So let's start keying in some of this tax return data since we already keyed in the uh, demographic and all that good stuff. So as you can see here, I don't have a W-2 on my phone tree. I didn't add it as part of my, my defaults, but you can if you want. Um, so there's a few different ways you can um, navigate to the forms that you want. One of them is by linking from the actual 1040. So I just went to 1040 wages number seven and clicked on the link right here. And the link here will show you you can create a new link for a new W-2. Uh, pretty much all the forms that fall into this, those of you who came from Tax Act, similar, similar way. So you can link it directly from there, or you can uh, simply just click up here or hit Control F10 and add the w, uh, W-2, which what I'm, I'm just gonna do it like this for now. 
So there's a W-2 for the tax uh, payer, it says right now, but this is actually for the spouse. So I'm going to check the box for the spouse and start getting rid of the red. Let's put in the employee ID. And then this popped up in red because the withholding, um, it exceeds the pub 15 guidelines. So sometimes that will happen. Just verify it and click that checkbox. And now the W-2 is in blue and we are good to go. So the next section we have to input here on this practice return is going to be uh, for George and he has a 1099 miscellaneous. Now we know it looks like, you know, he's uh, self-employed. So this will go on a Schedule C. So what I'll do is I'm going to add a form. It doesn't look like he has any um, any anything to write off, so we can just use this CZ. Uh, so we'll put taxpayer principal business is uh, construction business code. I believe if you hit F1, you can click to see the list of business codes right here and it sorts them out for you. So um, if you use F1 on the on that field, it'll give you the business code. So but for the sake of this example, I'm just gonna leave that one alone. All, those, all, all of you guys should know how to do this. Did you make any payments? I'm gonna say no to that. And then um, gross receipts, I'm gonna link this to a 1099 miscellaneous so I can key in that data. So this belongs to the taxpayer. Name wrong built. And he had line seven filled out one seven two fifty four four. Now I'm done. Everything is in blue. Everything's completed properly. Now finally we have an interest statement. Looks like they received two hundred and sixty one dollars from uh, their bank as interest and so we know and I'm going to show you a good example here of how you can key that in now is if you can see here under taxable interest on the 1040 I can type directly in here the amount okay that's one way you can do it another way you can do it is you can make it a calculated field link it to schedule B which is where we know the interest goes on to go to the interest other interest part and then link it to an interest statement and this way you can add multiple 1099 INTs and if they have more information like who they belong to and uh, if there's any tax withheld this one didn't have any tax withheld so I technically just keep it in but let's just go ahead and do it okay and there we go $261 so that completes that part uh, let's continue here And we also want to claim dependent care. So as you can see, this part is in red, 2441. And yeah, let's put the provider. And it says they have an EIN. And uh, amount paid, 1200 per child, so it's 2400 Hit tab. Now it wants to know how much for each child, and it's 1200 per child. 
So now we're clean and we're done. And now it's calculated into 2441. All right, what else do we have? Let's go through and clean up the red. We have 1040 worksheet is asking us over here if you claim child tax credit and was this allowed? So no. ACA, um, according to this scenario, let's see. Uh, Sandra covers the whole family and her insurance through work. So we're, we're not gonna have to worry about Keenan 1095. So we didn't get it to a marketplace, no exemptions and had central coverage. So we just got rid of the red. Now I think we're done with this form. Now it's checked out. Now finally, we have some EIC answers. And you can see some of them are filled out and some of them and the ones in black you don't have to mess with. And I think I'm done now. Now the Schedule ASC worksheet is filled out and it's also added to the return. Now what's left is the 8867 to due diligence and we'll just go ahead and answer that. And we're nice and everything is filled out uh, the only thing in red here is the price and that's only because I didn't fill out my price sheet there are some forms in here that I'm not charging for so um, I can manually key them in or just leave them alone maybe because I don't want to charge for them but other than that the return is complete um, I can uh, then the next step would be to print it I don't know if the print is available yet but let's see if we can print uh, signature pages yeah it's not it might not be ready yet because we're on 2017 let me try it one more time no nope. check often for updates we just need to get the updates so we can start printing and get the bank loaded and all that good stuff so we can start working for 2017 printed too many of them Okay, so at this point, if you guys have any questions, please stop them in or raise your hand. We'll 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 uh, get them answered. Any questions? No questions? Okay. The one thing I want to point out also is that you can um, print checks from within the software. Uh, you can do a lot more uh, and find out what's going on with your returns. Like. Another sh cool shortcut to remember is F7. When you're inside a return, if you click F7, you can get a nice summary of everything. You can also check the e-file statuses. You can also check the bank product, uh, if you got paid on it, if they got dispersed, the funds, if they cashed a check, you know, you can uh, see everything. If it was rejected, what the reject codes are, the state information, you know, there's a lot of useful information here that like simply typing in F7 will help you out. Uh, looks like Sandra has her hand raised. Uh, Sandra, I'm gonna unmute you if you have some questions, please go ahead and join. Hey, Sandra. Oops. I guess she
she didn't have a question. <laughs> if you have a question, let me know. Yes. Oh, um, with the e-file um, fee, the $15, um, are we going to be able to set it up like in Tax Act, you know, uh, that I, uh, you know, all the bank information, so it's taken out before I e-file? Yeah. So if you can see here on my price sheet, I actually made that an example. So see how it says an e-file fee? I just put $15. You can put whatever you want. Oh, I was wondering, that was um, added to the invoice. Is that, that's for yeah. us? Okay. Right. It's not going to be added to the invoice, the, the client invoice. No, it's not. Uh, well, it's going to be part of the preparation fee, whatever that line item goes on your uh, bank bank app. But this one will make sure you count. You make sure you charge it for it. So when you go, when you print out the bank application, it's not going to charge anything for bank or software or anything. It's just going to charge whatever the total comes up here. Okay. So there's only there's going to be only one line, just like last year. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, no questions. Amazing. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for joining me. And if you have any questions that pop up between now and the next webinar, please feel free to uh, send us an email, chat us up, uh, give us a call. We'll be glad to help you out. And uh, we're looking forward for the next few updates. Uh, we're excited about this coming year with TaxWise. It's really good software. So thank you for joining us and have a great uh, Christmas holiday.